All right, so we're at the water fill on the camper and we had a leak on the original that was leaking off where that fitting was. So I made up my own fitting and I'm gonna run that and PEX inside there. And I know that this part will withstand freezing. So that may offer me a little bit more protection. So then I took a unistep bit and I stepped that up to make the hole a little bit bigger. Now ordinarily this thing fit like right right here and then right where that threaded part was is what held it and there's not a lot of room in there to like maneuver or do anything so what i did was i got a uniseal and the uniseal is going to pop into here and then i'm going to run the hose through there and then that'll give me a little bit of flexibility so you can physically pull this out to make the connection you can shove it back up inside there it just gives you a little more leeway right there so i'm going to go ahead and get this uniseal set in the hole and then we'll go from there all right, so my unit seal's in place. This particular one, I had to go to inch and a quarter to get that set. And then this is supposed to, I believe, be a half inch hole. So if we can get this in there, that'd be awesome. So in she goes. So now we have the ability to pull this out a little bit for making our hose connection. And I can strap that inside if I want to, to keep it in one spot. But that gives me a lot more room here to make my hose make my hose up all right so we're going inside to finish so now i'm inside the camper and i like to, to do what's called a pre-crimp where i just put a little bit of pressure you don't close completely just a little bit on there and it just ovals out your fitting and then that way it doesn't slide on the pipe when you're trying to um, get this in position put the crimp on it so I need to do a little bit more. So now you can see I can adjust this and it'll stay put, it's not gonna slide around. <laughs> okay, for my next trick, I'm gonna attach this to where this comes through, right here, and then that way I'll have a shutoff valve that I can use if I'm testing my water, I can just shut it off right here, I don't have to run all the way outside to shut my water off. And then, um, this is the part that was leaking right here, is leaking underneath this seal somewhere, I, didn't, I couldn't tell if this was cracked. I couldn't tell if it was leaking from here. I couldn't tell anything, but in order to eliminate this problem and get rid of this plastic right here, give us a little bit more freeze protection, I'm gonna come back into here, cut this line off, and then hook that onto here. So here she goes. All right, so now I got my valve crimped onto here. It doesn't matter what the color is, because this is all gray anyway, so I just used some scrap pieces that I had. And so this is a bleeder so you can bleed the line but i don't need to bleed the line because this is just permanent and i want to make my make sure my valve is in a position that i can access it easily for turning it on and off and then from there just measure my length that i need cut this off and then i'll make the connection there now technically this probably takes a different style connector because it's a different type of pipe but uh, i think i can get this to work we're going to find out so after a quick investigation it appears that this gray pipe is just slightly bigger on the inside diameter than this than the red pex pipe is so i'm going to elect to use one of my squeeze clamps rather than the, the crimp on clamps because when you do one of these clamps it just crimps to the size that uh that that orifice is when i do one of these uh clamps it it goes according to pressure so i'm gonna hopefully be able to get that to seal we'll find out so tighten this down and then it's got a little indicator light on it but the thing is there it comes on see so that tells me that the pressure is correct and i can hit the release lever on here take it off there and then the only thing left to do is test it for pressure and make sure that it's good but that'll be kind of handy being able to shut the water off here 
if I ever need to without having to go outside of the camper to be able to do it. So who knows, that might be vital one day. But I could have used just a coupling or I could have ran this up and cooked it, cooked it directly. There was no shutoff valve in there before. So it's whatever, whatever. But hey, here we are. So next thing, um, looks like this valve, it'll actually fill the reservoir down here if this valve is open. But I haven't tried it, so I don't know. I still am yet to figure all this stuff out. I would like to be able to move this pump over so it's more out of the way or turn it sideways or something and get it out of the way of my couch. But that's the original location, so it may not be a problem. I'm not sure. But it'd be nice to have this, the face of that, even with the thing. So I'm not sure what I'm going to have to do yet. I'm just going to figure it out as I go. Okay, so after much head scratching on this thing, I realized that I could take this pump, disconnect it right there, and then just simply spin this around, right back around, baby, right round, like a record player, and stick it over here, take it up out of the way, make sure I'm not jamming everything up. If I'm using both hands, I'm sure it'll work a lot better. And then I can take, cut this here, take it off of here, or I could actually take it from here to here, because this literally connects into the same line and just plug this off so that'll be my next thing all right so i went ahead and put a t in here got those crimped off switched this out because i had to cut it anyway so made that go the other direction so it's not in the way connected this back to there and then over here i just went ahead and pulled a plug in so now i'm going to screw that down to the floor and we should be ready all right so looks like we got the blue line is for the water coming in and then you got a bypass and then this is the line coming out from the water heater i turned the water on and water started pouring out so i'm assuming that that had frozen at some time or rotted out or something so anyway it looks like it's going to need a new uh water heater yay in the meantime let's try this and check all our lines with the bypass all right let's see what happens Okay, so I hit the bypass. Now I got water flowing out on that side. Of course, it's not going to be hot, but at least we got water. And then I checked here where I made all my connections, and it's looking good. I don't see any leaks. So apparently, I did it right, and I can combine those pipes. And then I got the toilet put back in. Double check under there for any leaks. Checking this one, my water flow, my ray. I don't see any leaks under here. So that part's good. See if the toilet works. Yay. Toilet works. got something so goody goody gumdrops look like i'm gonna be able to do another video on how to replace a water heater on a uh, camper but anyway it looks like we take these screws out and then this whole unit is going to slide out through this hole and if we look up in here looks like it needed some attention anyway so i don't see any leaks on this end um so i don't see anything that i can readily see that would be causing this so it must be a rust rusted spot through the bottom of the tank or something is all I can all I can discern at this point without pulling it out and looking at it. Looks like I might have to take this gas line loose here, cut that back and do all that kind of stuff. So anyway, here's our information. Ten gallon. Alright. Yeah. 